The title for the uh, today's webinar is How to Become a Certified Financial Planner Professional in Canada. So just before I start, just a little bit of background about myself. Uh, my name is Ahmed Mahian. I'm a CFA Charter Holder, CFP Professional, and I also finished my Master's in Finance from University of Saskatchewan. I have been in the banking industry for over six years. I worked previously at RBC and uh, currently I have been working at uh, CIBC for the last three years. I teach financial planning at Seneca College and I am planning to become a professional trader, hopefully, in the, in the future. I'm currently enrolled with CMT and CLU programs too. So uh, what is a certified financial planning designation in Canada. So basically it's a worldwide certification. It is offered across 27 other countries and the total number of CFP that we have in around the world is over uh, 200,000 people. So it's a internationally recognized professional body and in the US it is administered by CFP board uh, and in Canada it is administered by FP Canada, so that's the designation body. And we have around 17,000 CFP professional that is working in Canada. So uh, please interrupt me if you have any question during the presentation. So let's take a look at uh, the demography of the CFP professional in Canada. In the US, these numbers are a little bit lower, like the female ratio is a little bit lower in the US but in Canada it is not equal yet but um, out of 10 people almost 7 people are male and 30% is female and most of the CFP professional falls under these two category like it's a mid level designation what I mean by that is people who have few years of experience like five to six years of experience those people tend to have this designation this and in order get to promote get promotion or to become a manager position you have to have like this, this designation uh, but it is the population distribution if you look at it uh, less than age of 35 there is not enough people so there is a high demand in the next few years in the financial planning space uh, wealth management space so uh, a lot of CFP professionals will retire in the next 10-15 years. So there is a huge demand in this space. So in terms of compensation, CFP professionals are compensated well. If you look at the distribution, so I took it from the FP Canada survey. So out of 100 people, almost 27% makes over $200,000. Uh, total compensation, 28% is between 100,000 to 200,000 and then less than uh, 100,000 is almost 18%. 27% uh, did not respond. So if I factor that number, if I assume that they don't exist, then you can see these, these number will be higher than what you are seeing on the screen. So people with more than 200,000 will be, if you do the math, it's it's going to be uh, high 30s and it's going to be close to high 30s too. So it is a well compensated designation, like people who have CFE designation, they tend to have high income. I took this chart from payscale.com. So in this measurement, if you can see, it is average total compensation is around 140,000, that range. But from my experience, if you are living in a larger city like Toronto, Vancouver, they have higher number. And there are a few other factors what goes into salary. For example, if your role is a revenue generating role, you can expect a significantly higher number than this, what you have been seeing here. So, so revenue generating means if you are a lead advisor at a firm or if you are a partner at a firm or if you have significant experience and you have been doing financial planning for a while, then your salary will be significantly higher than somebody who is in the entry level role. 
experience level and location as I mentioned so these two are very important uh, factors so if you if you are in a service uh, related role what I mean by that is somebody who is a para planner or uh, who is an assistant to the lead advisor or somebody who works at a bank but their role is mainly financial planning rather than sales so that number will fall close to the 100k range uh, in terms of employers it's basically divided into two group so you have the banks and then you have the insurance companies so banks rbc td cabc bmo scotia bank you know the big big five banks are there also you have the insurance companies like ig then canada life sun life manor life I'll explain why this is the case because the CFP professional, the type of education you get, it is directly applicable for the bank's wealth management and insurance company's financial planning department. Location wise, as you can imagine, like most of the CFP are in the, the these two cities, uh, Greater Toronto area and Greater Vancouver area. They almost comprise of 75 percent of the country's cfp numbers people who speak second language you can see a lot of chinese people some uh, like if you add these two almost 10 percent plus are from china and uh, hong kong then you have some significant indian population and obviously french uh, population so what exactly a CFP professional do? Let's take a look at the type of activity that they do during their day-to-day -day activities. So CFP professional typically works with high net worth individuals. So they help clients to set up goals like retirement goals, estate planning goals, business succession goals, you know, investment goals, things like those. And it changes over time, like different types of people in their different life stages. They tend to have different types of goals. So CFP professional, when we do need analysis or discovery, we try to figure out what are the financial goals that uh, our client wants to achieve. Then uh, one of our job is to breaking those technical term into plain English. We tend to have very technical knowledge but obviously our clients are not that technical so we normally try to break it down and it's not a one-time relationship it's a repeated relationship so we also remove emotional biases as you may know we are not rational we we have our biases and one of our job as a CFP is remove those human behavior like that does not help to grow our net worth. It's a relationship management based industry. So we try to meet our clients every six months. Some, some advisor meet quarterly, some advisor meet semi-annually, some, some clients are okay with the annual meeting. So basically what during those meetings, what they do is they review their plan and uh, update with uh, new information. And sometimes the client doesn't even know what they don't know. So for example, it is often seen in the estate planning side and tax planning side. So people assume a lot of things, but sometimes they are not true. So those area, people have a lot of misconception. Insurance side, they tend to have a little inf information, but you know, there are so many things that people don't know. So as a CFP professional, we try to bring our knowledge and apply to clients individual situation and then navigate through financial turmoil. So for example, during COVID in the first few months when the market was uh, very volatile, as an advisor, our job is to, you know, make sure that the client do not uh, do panic sale and keep them invested in their long-term goal. So these are the high-level things that CFP professionals do. So let's take a look at what are the financial area where we give advice. 
everything starts with budgeting and cash flow, as you may know, uh, structuring the assets and liability properly, making sure that accounts are properly structured. So if some, one of the one of the owner dies, making sure that it goes to the proper beneficiaries, things like that. If some clients have spending problem, so they make a lot of money, but they have spending problem to, to create a budget for those kind of client also falls under this category. Uh, allocating capital and growing net worth over time means like you, you can allocate your capital in different ways, uh, in different types of accounts, but as a CFP professional, our job is to make sure that we are allocating capital properly in terms of tax, in terms of uh, growth, and uh, choosing the right product also a huge advice piece here. We do a lot of retirement planning. So we calculate how much uh, retirement income the, the clients will have and what kind of expense they may look during retirement. Then we also help clients to maximize their Canada pension plan, CPP, old age security. If the client is making low income, then there are some planning options for low income families. Um, but this is a one area where a lot of Canadians don't get proper advice, especially if you are in a low income bracket, you certainly don't have the resource to hire a CFP professionals and you miss out on quality advice. Typically, if you go to the banks, they don't give advice for low income family because it's not revenue generating for them. This is what I wish we had a better option for Canadians. We do help with registered education and disability plan. Uh, people with disability, they tend to have, you know, bigger challenges. So as a CFP professional, we help them to set up uh, our RDSP and um, we invest the money and then we properly distribute it so that it's a more tax efficient. Uh, we also help clients uh, with their kids' education through different plan like RESP, some family trust uh, for wealthy individuals. Then we do help clients with selecting investment products. So investing, selecting investing product based on their individual risk tolerance and risk capacity. It's one of the bigger component what we do. There is a misconception in general population that as an advisor, our only job is to give investment recommendation. While it is a part of the overall financial planning, but it's, it's not everything, as you can see. Tax planning, you know, we are, we are living in the West and we are certainly in a high tax paying environment. So a lot of stuff that we do affects tax. And if you go to the high net worth space, a lot of decision that they do is to save tax money. I think about this way, like if one of your client is making $200,000 and they're in a 35% tax bracket, like average, average tax rate is 30 to 35%, their biggest expense is the CRA. It's not their mortgage, it's not their living expense. Their biggest expense is their uh, tax liability. So a lot of planning that we do uh, in the high net worth space is tax planning. Estate planning, having properly documented documents, especially will, power of attorney, then some wealthy Canadians use trust to for estate planning. Uh, these days, uh, a lot of us have digital assets, so making sure that those digital assets uh, go to the proper beneficiary in a timely manner some of us may help clients with you know content creator uh, somebody who makes a lot of money from youtube or uh, instagram post so for them they there is a specific estate planning need because their uh, situation is totally different than uh, traditional clients and insurance planning obviously like if your client has young family uh, then you want to make sure that you are giving them proper insurance advice to plan for the unexpected events. And if you go to the high net worth space, 
wealthy people buys insurance a lot because insurance comes with a lot of benefit a lot of tax benefit a lot of uh, you know you can you can expense a lot of premium uh, if you are buying insurance within a business things like that uh, that's why you know in the insurance company you see a lot of cfp professional because a lot of cfp does business planning so corporation buys a lot of insurance to protect their wealth so that's where these insurance planning comes in so i am going to take you to a different page actually so if you click here uh, if i click so this is the cfp uh, book of knowledge they call it cfp book of knowledge so these are the area of topic where a CFP needs to have knowledge, technical knowledge. So uh, financial planning and financial services regulation. So as a CFP professional, you have to know what are the provincial law applies to you. Then financial analysis falls under like cash flow budgeting. This will fall under the financial analysis, credit card how to do debt management so if you have a mortgage if your client is buying multiple houses even though we don't give advice for property purchases but if they have three four mortgages then a good financial planner will uh, help them to be debt free sooner or whatever the client's goal is Register retirement plan, government benefit plan, register education disability plan, economics, basic under, uh, understanding of economics, how central banks uh, influence the interest rate, things like those, investment, taxation, family law. So family law applies to uh, you know couples, common law partners, if they get divorced, separated, how they if affect the finances, things like those you will be taught here insurance how you can apply insurance in the personal side and you can advise on the uh, business side and then human behavior so a lot of uh, what we do is you know give comfort to our client we do a lot of um, emotional support so that you will learn here so basically when you go through the CFP curriculum these are the area of topics they, they will train you. Any questions so far? Sorry, Pai Rajan Pai Rajan Pai. No, go ahead. Okay. So what does a CFP professional don't do? So that might be a question that you might have. Uh, a CFP professional will certainly not file your tax. A lot of people especially who don't have financial knowledge they tend to think that we will also give them advice on how to file taxes things like that we are not trained to file clients taxes even though we do have a basic understanding of family law uh, or um, basic understanding of a little bit of understanding of contract law but certainly we don't have the proper training for giving legal advice so if you have a client who wants to set up a trust and you don't have that much training you probably should just uh, refer that to a proper professional selecting stocks and bonds we cfp professionals they don't do investment selection like that uh, some cfp you will see that they do portfolio management role but for to select in stocks and bonds you have to have additional qualification so in Canada, I actually have this on my... So in Canada, if you go to the high net worth space, if you want to become a portfolio manager where you want to buy stocks and bonds for your clients, you need to have either one of these designations, either a CFA or a CIM designation. So th these are the two designations that will qualify you uh, to become a portfolio manager. Once you become a portfolio manager, then you can buy stocks and bonds or ETF for your client's portfolio but as a CFP professional standalone CFP professional you can't you can't buy stocks and bonds you have to either outsource that task to a portfolio manager or you probably buy uh, a mutual fund 
that already does that portfolio management for you. Some uh, CFP professional may or may not have the insurance license, so it depends. If you are working with the bank, the bank doesn't allow you to have an insurance license, especially in the retail space. So you probably will not be able to sell insurance. So that's why it depends uh, on your licensing. So CFP designation is not a licensing exam. It's a designation, so it's an optional for you. Licensing exam is a mandatory requirement. So for example, if you are, want to be a mutual fund salesperson, you have to have your EFIC or CSC exam. Those are like licensing exam. Whereas CFP or CFAs, these are professional designation. It's not mandatory, but it's good to have because you have higher level of knowledge if you have gone through these pro programs. We do not give real estate recommendation. Obviously, you need to contact a realtor who has specialization in uh, buying real estate, like uh, rental income property. But because we understand the mortgage side, we tend to have a general idea what to look for real estate purchase. A lot of CFP, you will see that they have additional designation. It's just because every designation gives you a different set of eyes. So they look at a situation in their perspective. So every designation gives you different perspective. A lot of professionals they have, for example, I am currently doing CLU. So CLU program gives me perspective from an insurance side. So technical knowledge about insurance planning, business, you know, how to fund a business case, things like those. So each designation has their own niche and a lot of uh, professional have other designation uh, as long as CFP designation. So as I said, like a lot of lawyers, CFA, CIMs, TEP, CLU uh, designation holders, they, they have CFP uh, designation. All right, so let's take a look at how you can become a CFP professional. So now that let's say you want to become a CFP, what's the steps? What are the steps? So the first step would be um, you have to have technical education. There are two sets categories of education you have to have. One is core and one is advanced. I actually have that here. So if you go to FP Canada's website, so these are the approved core and advanced curriculum. Uh, so if you are living in Ontario, these are the programs that will qualify for the requirement. So for example, I teach at Seneca. So this program qualifies for the core and the advanced uh, program. Okay. So, so these are the technical education you have to have. Then uh, there is a introduction to professional ethics course that you have to take. The step three is CFP professional education program. They have one course. Then you will write for the actual CFP exam. I'll go through each of these uh, in details in the next few slides. Then you have to have three years of experience to qualify to apply for the CFP designation. So once you have uh, all of these step one to step four done and you have three years of experience, then you can have you can apply for the CFP certification. So once you have it, you can write uh, CFP beside your name. So this is the process as of April 1st. You do need to have uh, undergrad or post-secondary degree to, be, uh, to sit for the exam. So that's the new requirement. If you do have other designation, for example, a CPA. So this is the licensed financial planning in Quebec. Uh, CPA, CFA, if you have a JD or if you have CFP designation from other country, you skip the technical education. You don't, uh, you still have to do the step two. So technical education, we already showed you uh, the list of program that qualifies for that. 
Step two and step three is a introductory to professional ethics program. It's a two hour learning module. At the end of the module, you have to have a self-assessment. Um, you have to pay $150 for it. It's not going to take a lot of time, but it's something that they emphasize to go through. And then you have one professional educational program. It is uh, one semester long. So you can expect to spend around 70 to 90 hours to complete, 75 to 95 hours to complete. It, the program costs you around $1,500. So it has one to seven unit assignment. So it will give you an idea how to build a financial plan for your client. Uh, and then you have a final assessment uh, which carries around 50 yeah 50 percent wait for the final exam so uh, it's an eight assignment based course there is no teaching material like there is no class that you have to take it's a series of assignments that you have to finish the actual CFP exam is, you can take the exam in two ways. You can go for in-person exam or you can do remote procuring. It's a computer-based exam, so you have to type your answers. And it's a six-hour long exam. It's divided into three sessions. Each session is a two-hour long. And each session will have 20% to 30% multiple choice exam, uh, questions and then the rest of the questions will be scenario based. So you will be given a scenario with some information and then you have to give them short answer. You have to fill out different answers. The program cost is around 850 to 950 depending on when you register for the exam. And there is a work experience requirement. So you have to have three years of experience uh, doing financial planning work. You can take the CFP exam uh, before you have the three years of experience, but you will not be able to call yourself a CFP professional. Your professional experience has to be uh, under these categories. So financial management, investment planning, insurance, risk management, tax planning, retirement planning, estate planning. So the three years work experience that you will have, you know, has to fall under one of these category. And then you have a 25 CE credit requirement. So continuing education. So once you become a certified financial planner, then every year you have to do 25 hours of continuing education. As a CFP professional, we do have to follow a strict guideline, like they call it a code of ethics. So the principles are integrity, objectivity, competence, fairness, confidentiality, professionalism, and diligence. So when you are dealing with your client, you have to make sure that you are doing the best for your clients. You have to be very objective. You cannot have biases. Your analysis should be objective. You have to treat your all clients similar way. Obviously, they sometimes they have different types of uh, compensation model and you may have additional services, but uh, you know, you have to treat them fair, fairly similarly if they are paying you similar fees. Obviously, confidentiality is the big one. If you are working in a bank, you already know how important this is. Professionalism, you always have to act professionally and diligence. You, The analysis that you are doing for your clients, you have to do proper analysis. How do you find a CFP professional? There is a FP Canada directory where you can go and find a CFP professional. There is another organization um, that started a few years ago. I think it's a couple of years now. It's called FP Association CA. So I'll explain what, what are these two associations. So FP, so if you want to find a financial planner in your neighborhood, all you have to do is find a postal code. And so I'm in Scarborough, Ontario. So these are the 
financial planners that are in my neighborhood so there is 17,700 right now I guess uh, some of the so if I click here CFP certification so then it's 15,000 sorry so there is 15,000 active CFP certificate right now in Canada okay so that's the uh, FP Canada directory and then you have FP FPAC so FPACs are a new organization that follows fiduciary standard so what fiduciary standard is it's a higher level of ethical standard when you are joining this association you you have to take oath that uh, no matter what happens to your compensation model you will always take the best decision for your client whatever the best applies to them and they have a very good robust research Wikipedia so if you are joining as a member and you are dealing with a situation where it's a complex matter you can ask the other members and you can go through the documentation and it will give you idea how to how to solve a financial planning problem okay so that's pretty much it so you might be wondering why am i doing this cfp professional webinar so one of the reason i'm doing this is in ontario there is a new uh, law that was passed a few days ago it's called title protection what title protection is is basically if you have been working in the financial plan uh, financial services industry a lot of us call ourselves financial planner or financial advisor uh, but as an outsider think about from a consumer's perspective when they go to the bank they typically don't have any clue who they are talking to right so in a bank setup you may have financial planner you may have financial service representative or you may have banking advisor financial advisor client doesn't even know what these titles mean so what FSRA uh, that's the financial service regulatory authority of Ontario what they have done is they want to protect the consumer and they introduce this requirement where you have to have professional designation in order for you to call yourself a financial planner or a financial advisor so as of uh, last week I think a couple of weeks ago if you are in Ontario and you call yourself a financial planner you if you don't have an approved credential like approved designation then you you cannot call yourself a financial planner if you have been a financial planner for over two years then you have four years to transition like they will give you four years to complete this designation but if you cannot finish those before the deadline then you cannot use financial planner title if you call yourself a financial advisor then it's a lesser requirement but um, still there is a rules and uh, because FSRA is the largest body in Canada normally what happen is when something is introduced by FSRA it is usually followed by other jurisdiction like Alberta Provincial Securities Agency or uh, BC or there are other maritime provinces so as of today only Quebec and Ontario has passed this kind of legislation so you can imagine that in the future uh, especially in the next few years in order for entry-level professional to grow within financial services industry you have to have this kind of designation so this is one of the reason I am advocating Bengali community people to you know enroll into this kind of program to further advance in their career so i'm gonna stop here and i'll i'll open the floor for everyone for q a um, hey, huh. so sure you show the chart like uh, became the uh, uh, the cfp uh, the chart right like uh, so let's say uh, if someone has pfp 
so how they can uh, write or how many steps they can skip someone PFP, PFP, uh, sorry, uh, uh, PFP? PFP yeah. they used to have an exemption for PFP holder a couple of years ago I think as of last year they changed it so I believe as a PFP holder you may get exemption for the core and the advanced curriculum but they I, I'm not 100% sure what's the new rule let me see I, I didn't find any PFP like they used to have PFP holders specific certification path, but I don't see that anymore. Oh, I see. Okay. So if you go to the website, they have these five, like a few designation, but I don't see PFP anymore. It used to show PFP, but I'm going to assume that. So um, the FSRA has not approved yet so if you go here so you might be wondering what which are the approved credential bodies so FSRA uh, hasn't mentioned which are the approved body yet they are examining few designations so in Canada there are basically three big one that provides this kind of education one is FP Canada uh, so they have submitted their uh, application to FSRA basically saying that the CFP and they have the QAFP so FP Canada offers two designation one is uh, CFP and QAFP so they applied for both FSRA has not approved yet but they're examining so as long as you have one of these you might get you know enough education for that then there there is CSI if you go to CSI they have few designations for example PFP uh, is one of them they also applied for approval again FSRA has not confirmed yet if they have approved the PFP designation as a financial planning approved designation but in the next few weeks we might know and then you have advocates so advocates is another organization that gives designation for example they offer uh, CLU and some other insurance focused designation so they also applied for approval but until the decision from the FSRA we don't know yet which are gonna be the approved one but as I assume that uh, the CFP, PFP, and uh, CLE will be approved, but uh, don't quote on my words. Any other questions? Rajun Bhai, Rajun Bhai, any any other question? Okay, uh, can you hear me? Hi, Bhai, Shunta Patsi. Thank you so much Bhai, for your nice presentation. I just uh, want to know one more thing, like uh, in many banks or financial institutions, okay. the, the people who have the PFP designation, they also can uh, provide the financial um, uh, financial planner role in that organization. So why the PFP holder should take the uh, financial planner, like uh, CFP PFP designation? Elaborate, yeah. So. আমি যখন প্রথম ব্যাংকে শুরু করেছি আপনি রিজন ভাই মনে হয় আরবিসির সাথে রাইট জি আমি আমি শরীফ ভাইও কিন্তু আরবিসির সাথেই ছিল ব্যাংকিং অ্যাডভাইজার হিসেবে আমি আমার শরীফ ভাই দুজনই একসাথে ব্যাংকিং অ্যাডভাইজার হিসেবে জয়েন করেছিলাম অনেক বছর আগে সো আরবিসিতে পিএফপিটা হলো আপনার পিএফপিটা শুধুমাত্র চার্টার্ড ব্যাংকগুলোর জন্য ওরা ডিজাইন করেছিল সো আপনি যদি পিএফপিটার কারিকুলাম দেখেন যেহেতু আমি দুটাই করেছি আমি একটু আমার একটু আইডিয়া আছে যে সিএফপিটাতে মোর ফোকাসড ওরা ইন্স্যুরেন্স এবং এস্টেট প্ল্যানিংয়ে ওয়্যার অ্যাজ পিএফপিতে মোর ফোকাসড হচ্ছে আপনার ক্যাশ ফ্লো ম্যানেজমেন্ট ব্যাংকের যেগুলো ব্যাংক যেই প্রোডাক্টগুলো বিক্রি করে ওইটাতে ফোকাসড ওদের বেশি পিএফপিতে ওয়্যার অ্যাজ সিএফপিতে আপনার ইন্স্যুরেন্স এস্টেট প্ল্যানিং ওভারঅল ফাইন্যান্সিয়াল ফাইন্যান্সিয়াল প্ল্যানিং কীভাবে রেডি করতে হয় কারণ পিএফপি যারা করে তাদের তো ধরেন বেশিরভাগই হলো ব্যাংকের সাথে 
আপনি ব্যাংকের ছাড়া মানে রিটেল ব্যাংকিং ছাড়া পিএফপিটা কোথাও দেখবেন না ইউ উইল নেভার সি সামওয়ান ওয়ার্কিং ইন দ্য ইন্স্যুরেন্স সাইড হু হ্যাজ পিএফপি ভেরি রেয়ার ভেরি রেয়ার বাট ইন দ্য রিটেল সাইড পিএফপিটা হচ্ছে আপনার ওরা বেশি ফোকাস করে সো পিএফপিতে আমি যখন করেছিলাম তখন আমি দেখিনি কখনো যে ওরা আপনার ফাইন্যান্সিয়াল প্ল্যানিং কীভাবে করতে হয় মানে অ্যাজ এ অ্যাজ এ স্টেপ বাই স্টেপ কীভাবে ফাইন্যান্সিয়াল প্ল্যানিং একটা প্ল্যান একটা রেডি করতে হয় এটা আপনার পিএফপিতে নাই কারণটা হচ্ছে যে ব্যাংকের সাধারণত ফাইন্যান্সিয়াল প্ল্যানিং সফটওয়্যার ওদের থাকে ওরা আপনাকে ওটাই দিয়ে দিবে আপনি ওটাই জাস্ট শুধু ইউজ করবেন ওয়ার আর সিএফপিতে আপনাকে ওই যে ফাইনাল এক্সামটা ফাইনাল অ্যাসাইনমেন্টটা আপনি এখানে দেখালাম না আপনাদের কি এখানে ওইখানে আপনাকে বেসিক্যালি একটা প্রপারলি ডকুমেন্টেড ফাইন্যান্সিয়াল প্ল্যান রেডি করতে হবে সো আপনি ফাইন্যান্সিয়াল প্ল্যানিং আপনি যদি জানেন তাহলে আপনি কিন্তু কোনো সফটওয়্যার ছাড়াই করতে পারেন আপনি একটা ওয়ার্ড ডকুমেন্টেও আপনি ফাইন্যান্সিয়াল প্ল্যানিং রেডি করতে পারেন উইথ সাম হেল্প উইথ দ্য এক্সেল সো আপনাকে সিএফপিতে যেটা করবে যে আপনাকে ফাইন্যান্সিয়াল প্ল্যানিংটা ব্রেক ডাউন করে দিবে যে ওয়ার ইজ এ ফাইন্যান্সিয়াল প্ল্যান এবং আপনাকে ওরা ওইভাবে ট্রেন আপ করবে সো এই কারণে আপনি সিএফপিটা মোর রেকগনাইজড আপনার বোথ ইন্স্যুরেন্স এবং ব্যাংকিং সাইডে আপনি যদি ওয়েলথ ম্যানেজমেন্টে যান ধরেন আপনি আর বিসি ওয়েলথ ম্যানেজমেন্ট বা আর বিসি ডমিনিয়ন সিকিউরিটিসে যান তাহলে দেখবেন যে ম্যাক্সিমাম অ্যাডভাইজারদেরই ওদের সিএফপি আছে ওদের কিন্তু খুব খুব কম দেখবেন যে ওদের পিএফপি আছে বা ওরা আর পিএফপিটা ইউজ করে না একটা পয়েন্টে যাওয়ার পরে কারণ আসলে এগুলো রেজিগনেশন মেনটেন করাও অনেক এক্সপেন্সিভ আমি লাস্ট উইকে পিএফপি রেজি রিনিউয়াল করলাম আমার সো আমি আই ওয়াজ থিঙ্কিং যে শুড আই রিনিউ ইট অর নট বিকজ এই রেজিগনেশনগুলো আপনি যদি ওদের প্রফেশনাল অর্গানাইজেশনে মানে ওদের যে ধরেন আপনি সিএফ সিএফের সোসাইটির অনেক ধরনের অ্যাক্টিভিটি হয় ওরা অনেক ধরনের ওয়েবিনার রান করে অনেক ধরনের রিসার্চ রিপোর্ট তৈরি করে ওগুলো আপনাকে হেল্প করে আপনার কন্টিনিউ এডুকেশনের জন্য বা আপনার নেটওয়ার্কিংয়ের জন্য বাট কিছু কিছু ডেজিগনেশন আছে যেগুলো আপনার আর ওই ওই লেভেলের আপনাকে বেনিফিট দেয় না সো সি সিএসআই হলো সার্টেনলি ওয়ান অফ দোজ সিএসআইতে কখনো আপনি দেখবেন না যে ওরা কখনো ওয়েবিনার রান করছে ভালো কন্টেন্টের বা নেটওয়ার্কিং অপরচুনিটি দিচ্ছে সো আ লট অফ পিপল ওয়েন দে হ্যাভ লাইক মাল্টিপল ডেজিগনেশন দে ফিল লেস আর্জেন্সি টু রিনিউ দেয়ার পিএফপি হর আদার আদার ডেজিগনেশন সো ওই কারণে আপনি অতটা দেখবেন না ওয়েলথ ম্যানেজমেন্ট সাইডে গেলে আই হোপ দ্যাট অ্যান্সার ইউ কোয়েশ্চেন আর বি সিতে যেমন ফাইন্যান্সিয়াল প্ল্যানিংয়ের অথবা আইআরপি রোলে আপনি যখন যদি যান তাহলে আপনার ওরা পিএফপিটা রিকোয়ারমেন্ট হিসেবে ইউজ করে বাট থিংস মাইট চেঞ্জ আফটার দ্য অ্যাপ্রুভাল সো টাইটেল প্রোটেকশনের যে অ্যাপ্রুভালের ডিসিশনটা চলছে ওইটার উপর বেস করে অনেক কিছু চেঞ্জ হয়ে যাবে আমাদের ব্যাংকিং ইন্ডাস্ট্রি অনেক রোল দেখবেন যে টাইটেল চেঞ্জ হয়ে যাচ্ছে যেমন টিডিতে ধরেন ফাইন্যান্সিয়াল সবাইকেই ফাইন্যান্সিয়াল অ্যাডভাইজার বলে ফ্রম এ কনজিউমার পার্সপেকটিভ উই ডোন্ট নো হু হু ডাজ ওয়াট রাইট সো আপনি আপনি খুব ভালো করে জানেন যে এক একটা এক্সপিরিয়েন্সের অনেকটা এক্সপিরিয়েন্স অনেক ম্যাটার করে সো ইট উইল হেল্প অ্যান্ড ইট উইল চেঞ্জ আ লট অফ থিংস ইন দ্য কামিং মান্থস থ্যাংক ইউ রাজন ভাই জয়েন করার জন্য আর একটা জিনিস আমি যাওয়ার শেষ করার আগে যে ফাইন্যান্সিয়াল প্ল্যানার আপনার যখন আপনারা হয়ে যাবেন তখন ডিফারেন্ট টাইপের কম্পেন্সেশন মডেল কাজ করে আপনারা শুনে থাকবেন যে ফি বেসড অ্যাডভাইজার এবং আরেক ধরনের অ্যাডভাইজার নাম শুনবেন যে অ্যাডভাইস অনলি প্ল্যানার অ্যাডভাইস অনলি প্ল্যানার দেখবেন যে বেশ কিছু যদিও এই সংখ্যাটা কম ক্যানাডাতে বাট আপনাদেরকে একটা আইডিয়া দেওয়ার জন্য আমি জাস্ট দেখাচ্ছি অ্যাডভাইস অনলি প্ল্যানার সো ফি বেসড অ্যাডভাইজার মোটামুটি সবাই আমরা ফি বেসড অ্যাডভাইজার ধরেন আপনি ওয়েলথ ম্যানেজমেন্ট সাইডে যদি যান তাহলে প্রত্যেকটা ইনভেস্টমেন্ট অ্যাডভাইজার বা পোর্টফোলিও ম্যানেজার ওরা ইউজুয়ালি ক্লায়েন্টকে ওরা 
অ্যাসেট আন্ডার আন্ডার ম্যানেজমেন্টে চার্জ করে সো যদি ক্লায়েন্টের এক মিলিয়ন ডলার ইনভেস্টমেন্ট থাকে ওরা ইউজুয়ালি টু টু ওয়ান অ্যান্ড হাফ টু টু পারসেন্ট চার্জ করে সো দ্যাট গিভস দেম দ্য ফি এন আ ফি ফর রানিং দ্য সার্ভিস আপনি যদি আর বি সির রিটেল সাইডে কাজ করেন অ্যাজ এ ফাইন্যান্সিয়াল প্ল্যানার ওর আইআরপি হিসেবে কাজ করেন দেন দ্য কম্পেনসেশন মডেল ইজ বেস প্লাস হোয়াট এভার দ্য কম্প বোনাস ইজ রাইট ওর অ্যাজ এ আইআরপি ইউ মেক কমিশন ফর ফর সেলস দের এগুলো হলো সবই আপনার ফি বেসড মডেলের মধ্যে পড়ে আর এক ধরনের মডেল আছে যে অ্যাডভাইস ওনলি মডেল সো এখানে আপনার আপনাদেরকে জাস্ট একটা এক্সাম্পল দেখাই আমি এদের বিগ ফ্যান এরা এই এই ফার্মটা ওরা আপনার ওরা ফি অ্যাডভাইস ওনলি প্ল্যানার অ্যাডভাইস ওনলি প্ল্যানার মানে হচ্ছে ওরা কোনো ইনভেস্টমেন্ট বা প্রোডাক্ট সেল করে না ওরা জাস্ট শুধু আপনাকে অ্যাডভাইস দেয় সো দিস গিভস ইউ অ্যান আইডিয়া হোয়াট ক্যান হাউ মাচ ভ্যালিউ ইউ ক্যান চার্জ লাইক ফর ফর ইউর অ্যাডভাইস সো বেসিক্যালি আপনি যদি এখানে যান ওদের ফি স্কেডিউল দেখেন সো ওদের ফি স্কেডিউল আপনার দে স্টার্টস উইথ এ থ্রি থাউজেন্ড ডলার ফর সিঙ্গেল পারসন থার্টি ফর ম্যারিড সো আপনি একটা ফাইন্যান্সিয়াল প্ল্যানিং রেডি করে দিবেন ওদের জন্য এবং দ্যাটস হাউ ইউ বিল ইউর ক্লায়েন্ট সো থার্টি ফর দ্য ম্যারিড ক্লায়েন্ট থ্রি ফর সিঙ্গেল ক্লায়েন্ট ইফ ইউ হ্যাভ ইনকর্পোরেটেড বিজনেস দেন ইটস গেটস এট লিটল ট্রিকি বিকজ ইউ হ্যাভ বিজনেস ট্যাক্স প্ল্যানিং টু সো ওই কারণে বিজনেস ট্যাক্স প্ল্যানিং একটু আপনার এক্সপেন্সটা বেশি হয় সো দিস পিপল আর অ্যাডভাইস ওনলি সো দে ডোন্ট সেল এনি প্রোডাক্ট দে সেল অ্যাডভাইস যদিও এটা খুব লিমিটেড ইন ক্যানাডা বাট এটা আস্তে আস্তে গ্রোয়িং হচ্ছে ইউএসএতে এই মডেলটা বেশ পপুলার অ্যাডভাইস ওনলি প্ল্যানার এবং ইউএসএতে সিএফপি প্রফেশনালদের আরও বেশি মানে ক্যানাডাতে সমস্যা যেটা ক্যানাডাতে ওভার সাপ্লাই আমি একটা অ্যানালাইসিস করে দেখেছিলাম কয়েক মাস আগে যে পার ক্যাপিটা সিএফপি ক্যানাডাতে প্রায় ডাবল ইউএসের তুলনায় সো যেহেতু ডাবল সাপ্লাই সো অবভিয়াসলি এবং এটা সিএফের ক্ষেত্রেও সত্য সিএফএ ডেজিনেশন সিপি এর ক্ষেত্রেও সত্য যে ইউএসএতে আপনার এত অ্যাডভাইজার নাই সো যেটা হয় যে ওরা ফেয়ারলি গুড অ্যামাউন্ট অফ ফি চার্জ করে কারণ ওটা মার্কেট ডিমান্ড সাপ্লাইয়ের ব্যাপার সো ক্যানাডাতে আসলে ওভার সাপ্লাইয়ের কারণে আমাদের ফিল্ডটা খুব আন্ডার কম্পেন্সেটেড আমি বলবো সো টিপিক্যালি একটা ফাইন্যান্সিয়াল প্ল্যানার এক্সপিরিয়েন্স ফাইন্যান্সিয়াল প্ল্যানার টু টু থ্রি হান্ড্রেড ডলার পার আওয়ার চার্জ করে যদি অ্যাডভাইস ওনলিতে যায় সো এটা হলো আপনার অ্যাডভাইস ওনলি আর আমরা আমরা যারা ইন্স্যুরেন্স কোম্পানি অথবা ব্যাংকে কাজ করি তারা সাধারণত টিপিক্যালি নাইনটি হলো ফি ফি বেসড অ্যাডভাইজার সো এটা দিয়েই আমি শেষ করব যদি কারো অন্য কোনো কোয়েশ্চেন না থাকে থ্যাংক ইউ সো মাচ ফর জয়নিং এ ধরনের অভিনয় করার আরও প্ল্যান আছে অন্যান্য টপিক নিয়ে সো যদি আপনারা ভালো রিভিউ দেন বা ফিডব্যাক দেন তাহলে খুব ভালো হবে নেক্সট ওয়েবিনারগুলো আরও ভালো করার জন্য and also there is a lot of uh, newcomer come from bangladesh who has been working in the banking industry successfully you know when they came in canada they were kind of frustrated because they don't get a good job so this mm-hmm. kind of education or like information uh, uh, if if someone like you like or or others could provide them it would be a great help for them to get a job thank you sharif bhai thank you rajan bhai thank you rajan ভাই জয়েন করার জন্য ভাই কথা হবে বাই